But you know, we uh, and most of you uh, have heard our a little bit of testimony. We, um, you know, um, sort of minister in different uh, realms, especially the industry. And uh, I was just watching on the live stream uh, Kanye West. Did you know he's turned on? Did you guys know that? And I mean, he was preaching and singing, and and uh, he loves God, man. He loves God, and he's and. And it's amazing uh, what they're doing in Hollywood, and you're going to see a lot more of this. It's going to be great. Amen. And we get to go back and, uh, you know, get around and, and, and minister uh, behind the scenes, and, and God's given us a platform. And I, I said this once before, we don't use our daughter. Our daughter is who she is. We've been preaching the gospel. This is uh, our 47th year full time, so I'm 48. I didn't like that laugh at all, lady, at all. But anyway, uh, uh, we, we get to go in and, and you know, uh, uh, God is moving in Hollywood. And he's moving behind the scenes in the industry. And uh, uh, people, I've, I've heard people say, well, you know, Hollywood is going to hell, brother. I always say, well, where are you going? Where were you going? Same place. But God is touching in the hearts and the lives. Come on, isn't that great? Are you guys excited about that? No, I don't know about you, but I mean, how many know that Kanye West will get a lot of people, you know, attention? Are you hearing me? And, and so there's others. You're going to be surprised, man. I'll tell you, in these last days, you might even see Lady Gaga get up and sing, Jesus loves me, this I know, in all her array. <laughs> but uh, we get to go and minister and uh, in, in different places and, and God's given us a platform with our daughter and the young people this well, our heart is for uh, this generation because God's got his hand on this generation and he's not he's going to use them to bring the harvest in now us that are seasoned like my wife says we have our place in the body of Christ nobody's left out somebody says well that's not fair you know I've been saved for 50 years and, and no God's going to use because you can ask a young person to meet somewhere on Saturday and we're going to go to the streets uh, and man they're there and they're ready to go but you tell somebody around my age man they want a breakfast and uh, you know they're tired after 15 minutes come on somebody help they want to call an Uber and uh, you know, but the young people, God's got his hand on. He's going to use them in a great way. He's going to use you in a great way. This church, is you haven't seen anything yet. No, you haven't seen anything yet. I mean, there's a multitude of people that God's going to send to this church. And I don't say this, you know, just to say it because God's raising up a unique uh, uh, church today in the land, okay? And they're a cutting edge. And you guys are on the cut. And you're, you're a church that people will like to go to. When we go into cities and stuff, we go minister and we go out and we meet people and they go, oh, well, where are you speaking and everything? And I uh, said, so we're over here at this place. And, and they come. After the service, we see them, and they said, you know what? If church was like this, I would have been going to church a long time ago. But where I used to go, they used to put their finger, you know. This finger sent more people to hell. Going to hell for smoking. Well, you're not going to hell for smoking. You may smell like you've been there, but you're not. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I mean. And God's raising up. And listen, you, you talk about crowds. There's a crowd. Maybe I've heard people say, now, brother, brother, I don't like big crowds. Well, if you don't like big crowds, you're not going to like uh, heaven. And can I tell you, there's another crowd you definitely will not like. So God have a harvest out there. Come on. And he's going to use us, and, and it's the end times, and he's breathing. He saves some anointings uh, in places where people have never walked in, and, and, and it's going to be exciting. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about knowing Jesus. And I'm grateful that God allowed me to have so great a salvation. So you should be thankful. You know, some people say, well, I wonder how long he's going to go. Or, what time are we getting out? Like you've got something important to do to go to that same dumb restaurant you go every week. <laughs> and I already said it, uh, uh, I think last Wednesday night or two Wednesday and I said there's nothing exciting at the house unless you just got married. Come on. 
Anybody get married last week? No. Okay. So, 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 you know, <laughs> it's great to be alive, and I'm grateful, and you should be grateful for for this relationship. We don't have a religion; we have a relationship. And and you know one thing, you just need to be yourself, and 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 thank God you you've been freed from religion. Some of you came out of these religions. You know, a preacher gets up. Dearly beloved, we're here gathered in the name of Jesus today. <laughs> and God's going to do something one of these days. Yeah, when we remove you from the pulpit, he will do something. <laughs> and some of you have been delivered. Come on, somebody, from religion and you're free. Come on, and who the sun sets free is free indeed. I don't know about you, but I don't even supposed to be here. Look back at my life. Some of you don't both supposed to be sitting here today. Some of you have had a second chance. Some of you should have got shot. Some of you should have got killed in that car accident. You think about it, but God had his hand on Some of you, I'm telling you, it's wonderful that he's given us so great a salvation. And it's not some church thing. It's not you come in here four fast and too slow and give an offering and go home. There's no, that's not church, man. This is a relationship, and we're going to live this through eternity. And don't you know all these uh, mass murders lately? Don't you know that a lot of those people love to sit in those chairs right there? Come on. Aren't you grateful this morning? No, aren't you really grateful this morning? Come on. Are you grateful for, for, for his relationship? Man, it's wonderful. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I love it. I've been doing it 47 years. I just turned 72. I'll give some of you a run for your money. If you're broke, we'll just put an IOU. God gave me a revelation. We're going to get into this and we're going to release an anointing. I mean, no, I love the anointing. Don't you love the anointing? I love the presence of God. I'd rather have five minutes of the presence of God than five preachers preach. Because in that presence, things happen. Well, I mean, no, when God shows up, things happen. That's why you're sitting here this morning, because God showed up in your life and something took place. Now, I was a yippie in the 60s. That's a radical hippie. My drug was LSD and weed and boy did I ever do it man my two words were wow and said it backwards wow and when I got real loaded I said mom anyway uh, some of you guys have never been that way though I know you're sanctified and you're wearing halo whatever <laughs> but yeah I was saved out of, a, out of the yippie movement the hippie movement in the 60's God just reached down and touched me in an apple orchard. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll be able to give you my, my testimony because it is a phenomenal testimony. I mean, I didn't go to the altar or nothing. You know why? Because God can work outside the church. God works outside your four little walls that you, you know, way he, you got to get them to church. You got to hear the preacher and then you got to come to the front. You got to say the words and then you get saved. No, he met me in an apple orchard of all places. Come on. And there was no, no preacher around. There was no altar. Come on. I was just hungry for a realization. I was hungry for love and I wanted God. I don't know. And man, I'm telling you, he showed up. Changed my life. Never been the same. Don't want to be the same. God gave me a revelation, gave me a word, and we're going to get here. Revelations chapter 4. If you got your Bibles, Revelations 4. I'm glad you're here today. Amen. I am. That's a weak clap. My God. How many want a million dollars? Well, there ain't no clap on that one. How many of you ever had a, you read the scriptures and all of a sudden a word pew, just pops out. That's called revelation. Can I stop here and tell you that we're living in a day of revelation, not information. Get rid of your information and get your revelation. Because you need revelation on your finances. I mean, got information. You can open up your checking account. Come on. 
You got information. How many need information on their family or that son or that daughter? How many need, you need revelation, uh, not information on your business? See, when God releases revelation on whatever it may be, then it'll cause you to pray and walk in the perfect will of God. Now get this. If you fall asleep, I'm going to spit real far. <laughs> and if you're sitting on the front, front row, you may get some anyway. But it's anointed. And if you fall on the floor and speak in tongues, you got spit on. But we need revelation, not information. And, and, and you know, you'd be reading the scripture. I read scripture and all of a sudden, phew, bye, I'm gonna sticking out there. And I, I got one while back, man, and I went over and said, honey, check this out. And she looked up at me and said, it's always been there. Well, just go to your room, that's for sure. I mean, you busted my bubble. How many's ever got excited about something? Man, I'll tell you what, I got this. Thing. And they say, yeah, we know that. Oh, shut up, you don't either. I mean, he's very excited about the things of God or Scripture, and he gives it to somebody, and oh, come on. But God gave me this word, and look at this. It's Revelation, the fourth chapter, verse 1. And, and in this Scripture, can I say, I'm not a teacher. Uh, you know, I don't teach the word. Your pastor is a teacher. See, he can, he can unroll it and get the Greek and the Hebrew and all that. And on this Scripture alone, you can pull out all kinds of Revelation. But this is the one that I want to get to. He says, after these things, I looked. Everybody say, looked. And behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me and saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. There's a lot of revelation in that. But the one word that God gave me out of that whole scripture is the word look everybody say look when I saw that all of a sudden the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and he said this he said too many of my people are just looking look at this look at my kids and look at the price of gas and look 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 at this and look at that he said too many are looking but then he said this to me. He said, I'm going, now get this, because this might want to get you up and run if you want to run or scream or something. There was one time I was, I was preaching, and this little old lady, she got up and just screamed. And after service, I went out and said, was that okay with you? She said, I've been wanting to do that for years. <laughs> he said this. He said, I'm going to begin to release. Come on now a seeing anointing upon this generation and I'm going to take their looking into seeing. Oh, come on, let me say it again. I, he said, I'm going to begin to release a seeing anointing upon this generation and I'm going to turn their looking into seeing. And when you walk out of this door today, we're going to believe God that you're going to be a seer and today will be the last day that you'll ever look. Come on, somebody. We're going to anoint your eyes with eyes that you may see. God wants the generation to see. You've got to see some things. You've got to quit looking at your children. You've got to quit looking at your daughter that's running crazy. You've got to quit looking at your son in and out of jail. you got to, come on somebody. you got to see your business. If you could see your business like God sees it, you'd be making all kinds of money. But the church is just, look at this. Most most pastors, I don't say a lot, but some, well, look, our attendance was down. Thank God your pastor's not that way. He don't look at the attendance. Oh, our offering. Look at this offering. It ain't good at all. Look at it. Look. No. Your, your pastor's a seer. Man, just look what he's doing. My goodness. It's amazing. I started, look, I started thinking about seers, and I, and I started studying some things, and I'll throw a few things out. I, I want to show you some of the seers that we've had in this, in this nation at one time. How about Walt Disney? Walt Disney was a seer. I mean, you know, if he was just a looker, we would never have Walt Disney. We wouldn't have Disneyland. If you go to Japan, it's Disney Rand. God, honey, I thought the second service was going to be better than the first one, but I don't know what moves you guys or whatever it is. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Jesus, help us. Walt Disney. I could tell you some stories about Walt Disney. It would shock you. You know how he discovered, and I'll give you one real quick, a Mickey Mouse. You know how he discovered Mickey Mouse? He was put up in a loft. Walt Disney, when he was young, uh, he didn't have a place to stay in, so a person let him stay up in a loft uh, with this mat on the floor, and he would be laying there. And at nighttime, this little mouse from one end of the loft, um, out of a hole, it would come running across, turn around, stop, and throw his ears up in front of him. Walt Disney and just look at him, turn back down and walk back uh, and go in a hole on the other side. I'm serious. And then all of a sudden one day after this happened for a few weeks, every time he'd go to bed, this mouse would come and stop, turn around, his ears would flop up. And one time when he did it, he said, Mickey Mouse. Isn't that amazing? I could give you more stories. It's amazing. He was a seer. How about Bill Gates? Bill Gates. He was a seer. How about Steve Jobs? I wrote it down. If you didn't have Steve Jobs, you wouldn't have all those toys. How about Henry Ford? Thank God Henry Ford was a seer. Or we riding bikes. How about Picasso? Picasso was not satisfied with just canvas paintings. Uh, he was a seer. He got and did a big mural on the wall. All of you know that. Did you know today millions of people from all over the world comes to see the seer's painting? If he was just a, a looker, he would have it on canvas, and I'm sure it would be real nice, and it would be great. But he was a seer. He put it on top so everybody could see it. How about Dr. Martin Luther King? How about, I'm right, I wrote some of these down. George Washington, he was a seer. There's many more. We could go on and go on. They're seers. I stopped and asked the Lord one time. I said, why is it that all the seers are in the world and we don't have them in the church? But the Lord said this. He says, I'm going to raise up some Picassos. Woo! He said, I'm going to raise up some Bill Gates. Come on. I'm, I'm going to raise up some Henry Fords. Come on. I like uh, Star Trek. Uh, uh, what is it, um, Mary? What's, what's that one I like all the time? I can't, not Star Trek. Um, Shark Tank. What you laughing about? I know what the message is. I, I like it. Uh, and, uh, you know, all those people that come on there are seers. Can you imagine? Have you seen some of those inventions? You go, man, why didn't I get that? They're making millions of dollars. I've come up with a couple of inventions. I'll tell you one. I told the first service one, but I'll tell you another one that I came up with. I was sitting in the congregation one day. You, you never noticed how worship leaders would say, come on, let's clap your hands. Hey! Let's clap your hands. Hey! And they start singing. And they're clapping their hands. But they're not really clapping their hands. They're clapping their wrists, if you see that. And so I am going to make a hand that clips onto the wrist. And I'm going to sell them out to all the worship leaders. Have them attach it to there, and then they go, hey, uh, let's clap our hand. Hey, let's clap our hand. <laughs> I'll make millions. Now, if I come back here and I find out you did it, I'm going to shake your hand. I should tell them about the other invention, right? Well, I call it lazy man pancakes. I promise you can't use this. But Lazy Man Pancakes is very simple. You take popcorn, you put it in the batter, and when you put the pancakes in the skillet, you wait till the popcorn pops and it flips the pancake over. <laughs> and you can only do it in the South. Get that pancake, baby. It flipped. We're having a good time. 
you're not going to get out of here until I let you go. And if you leave early, I told the ushers to tackle you. <laughs> See, we need to be people seeing through things, not looking at them. I took my glasses off one time. I wore glasses, I wore sunglasses, stuff, and I was cleaning my glasses, and the Lord said, this is what the church is doing. They're just looking because, see, I'm looking at you. I, I really don't, I can see your face, a little bit of definition, but I can't really see that good. But how many's ever wearing glasses? You put these on? Bam! Wow! You were sticking your tongue out at me. That's weird. I went to the doctor. I had, uh, I had some cataracts, you know, nothing major. You know, I wasn't going blind, but I went to get my eyes checked, and the doctor says, you got cataracts, and I can take them off in 20 minutes. I said, really? He said, you don't have to go to sleep or nothing. Just lay down. We'll run you under the machine do a laser thing and when you come out you're going to see like you have never seen before i said okay I went under there <laughs> came out took the patches off opened my eyes i said oh my god doctor this is incredible he said what's wrong i said you have invented lsd because i can see colors again come on somebody help me <laughs> I can see colors like never before. My God, please let's market this. We'll make millions. And I couldn't, man. I just kept seeing. I was, man, I was going, and that whole day I'm out like this. People thought I probably was all messed up on LSD. I was like, wow. And I looked at my wife. She's 20 years younger. Woo, baby. Come on. Some, I saw like I've never seen before. We're going to pray in just a few moments that God anoint your eyes. How many would say, I need to see some things? How many need to see some things on their business? How many know God knows where the money is? But if you're just going to look like everybody else is looking, you're not going to make it very much. How many like to see some things on that son that's running crazy? How many like to see something on that daughter that's out there? Come on. How many like to see some things on their future? You know, Peter and, and Jesus were standing in a room, and Jesus said this to Peter. Peter, how do you see this woman? She's standing in the room. How do you see this woman, Peter? He said, Lord, you know who she is. Come on. Well, he didn't see her as Jesus sees, saw her because she was a future disciple. And see, the reason why God wants to anoint your eyes is not just for you, but for others. How many's ever been with somebody and they and you say this thing? If you're raising children, if you raise a, ch a child, and I've had a few of them, Katie and, and, and Angela, my other daughter, and David, and uh, they bring somebody home to date, and I always told them, I said, listen, there's only two type of men in the world: the zeros and the heroes. And I said, I won't mind to hook up with heroes, ladies. How many want your Hook up with heroes. Come on. How many's had some zeros? Raise both hands and feet. Come on, lady, lady, right back here. And uh, and, and and so they would bring somebody home to go out, and my wife and I'd be sitting there. They go out the door, and I look at my wife and I said, "Can't she see that? Oh my God! Can't, if she hooks up with, oh my God! Let's pray and pray in tongues. Can she see that?" How many's ever said that about somebody? Can't they see that? If they hook up with that Slick Willie, come on, somebody. They've been going to church, real nice lady, and all of a sudden Slick Willie comes in and he pretends he knows the Lord. And, and before you know it, and three months later, he's out on the street with her. Come on, somebody. And you said, man, can't they see that? Can't she see that? He's no good for her. I'm not picking on men either, but it happens that way. Amen. So we need to see some things. Stand on your feet. We're going to pray. We're going to pray and we're going to ask the Lord. Scripture says, anoint my eyes with eye salve. Now we've had a little bit of fun, but this is real serious because when you walk out this door, I want you to be a seer. Today is going to be the last day that you ever look in your life. You're going to have surgery on your eyes. Are you listening to me? 
You're going to have that same kind of surgery that I had that when I opened up my eyes, I could see colors. I could see things from a distance like I had never. Man, I'm telling you, it was incredible. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to open up your eyes so you can see. Some of you, God's got some things for you that are incredible. Some of you can make some money that will uh, shock everybody. But you got to be a seer and not a looker. So close your eyes and put your hand. You know what I'm going to do? Just take the ends of your hands and just touch your eyes. If you're wearing glass, you might want to take them off. Just touch the ends of your, you know, with your eyes and close your eyes. And let's pray right now. And listen, when I say pray, I want you to begin to ask the Lord, God, I need to be a seer. Lord, I need for you to anoint my eyes with eye salve. Lord, touch my eye. Come on, open your mouth. Begin to talk. I can't pray for you. I'm going to pray, but you got to, oh, Lord, I need you uh, to touch my eyes. I got to see some things uh, about my family, Lord. I got to see some things about my business Lord come on somebody talk to the Lord I need to see some things about my 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 son or my my what my uh daughter Lord I need to see some things Father about my ministry you that are called to the ministry you got to see some things uh, Father I pray right now in Jesus name uh, that you begin to release uh, a seeing uh, come on some of you guys are just standing there but you got to pray you got to ask the Lord God I need to see in Jesus name Father I thank you for anointing anoint uh, anoint my eyes uh, with eyes sad uh, that I might see Lord come on pray in the name of Jesus Father I thank you for anointing my eyes, anoint their eyes, release this seeing anointing upon their life, Father, that they would be able to see the things in the future in the name of Jesus. Now, come on, somebody thank the Lord right now. Thank the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say, I'm a seer. Say it out loud today. Say it out loud. Today is the last day that I'll ever look. Now I want you to say it out loud and shout it. I'm a seer. Now give him a shout. Hallelujah.